So Mini ITX rigs are pretty cool. I mean, they're small, they're compact. This one I have disassembled for the most part. But in general, I mean, I can put a 2060 graphics card, 2070, 2080, whatever I wanted to put in here. I have a full-on ATX power supply, a 9900K, a 120 mil AIO, because that's the only cooler I could get that would fit in here, and an SSD. I've got plenty of room for storage. I also have an additional one terabyte WD green hard drive. I love the green series just because they're really quiet. But the one problem that they have is they only have one PCIe slot. So if I want a graphics card, well, say goodbye to 10 gig networking, wireless VR, or even multi-port capture cards. But that doesn't have to be the case. I wanna see if we can turn our M.2 slot into another PCIe slot. Let's get into it. So right there is the M.2 slot we wanna use as a PCIe slot. Now we have a problem. The power supply is in the way and the GPU goes right here and it butts right up against the power supply. So we need to somehow convert this M.2 slot into a PCIe slot as well as relocate it immediately. So that's gonna be fun. I think we have enough space right in here that we could put a card in. So like a 10 gig network card, wireless VR, or you know a capture card, anything like that. But I also have to limit myself to what things I can get outside of the case. So I can get some wires out right here. This is just the top of the PCIe slot, but I can also get some wires out right here. I was thinking about putting an ethercon connector right here or some network jacks down here. For this video, I'm gonna go ahead and install a 10 gig network card. So ethernet is what we're looking to get out of this computer because this is only gigabit LAN. So I could either pull out a cable right here or I could put an ethercon port up in here or a keystone jack anywhere down here. So the first thing that I bought was this little guy. It's an M.2 to PCIe X4 interface. It also comes with this SATA power to floppy power, which you use to add power into the PCIe slot. As I said, we need to be able to relocate the PCIe slot because right in here where the card would go, we don't have enough room for anything. So I bought this pretty inexpensive unshielded PCIe riser cable. I'm hoping that I can use this to turn, bend, and go up. And that way I can move the PCIe slot to right behind the power supply. Now let's get all this stuff installed on the computer and see if my plans will even work at all. To give myself some room, I'm gonna pull out the power supply, just lift this up here, and get rid of my front panel audio for now. We can move these cables out of the way. Now I wanna get in here with my screwdriver and remove the screw for the M.2 slot. Aw, oh, dang it. Lost that in there. Next, I'm gonna install our little riser board and put in the screw. All right, and if I take something like my 10 gig ethernet card here, I can slot it in right here in probably the worst location possible. But this would just be, you know, a little proof of concept thing, but I just kind of want to jump straight to the good parts. I've already tested this configuration here and it works. So I'm going to move on to adding in our PCIe riser immediately. Just put in the, the riser cable and get this guy bent out of the way. I think I'm going to go this way over and up. So I have the card installed here. I put the computer back together roughly. Uh, I have the card right down here. We have a network cable that's plugged into it just coming out the side of the computer. And I still have plenty of room to put the hard drive in. Now I just need to put some electrically insulating tape on the back in front of the card to make sure that it doesn't you know, make contact with the radiator or the back of the GPU and then we can get this thing tested. Okay, so I've covered the PCB in electrical tape, just all the back connections and stuff. The heat sink I'm leaving exposed, but now I can go ahead and plug it back into our riser card here. There we go. And we can take our cable, and I'm just having the cable come in through the side of the case, and we can plug it in. Now, if this whole thing works, I will relocate a port here to the back of the computer, probably right around down here. All right, so I've already installed the drivers for this network card on this computer here. So when we fire it up, if we see network status over here, we know that it's working. 
I have the cable right now plugged into one of the ports in the switch behind the TV here. Okay, well we have a, a Quantia Action slot 0400. All right, that's a good sign. It's just, I don't know why this computer is trying to boot from it. All right, and this little icon right here is all the confirmation we need. If I go into our network and internet settings, go to our network and sharing center, change adapter settings. We can see our action 10 gig network adapter. It's running at one gig right now because that's what my network supports. But yeah, so. All in all, this works. Now it's just time to get this guy sealed up and install a network jack somewhere on the back of this computer. And this is our final result. A mini ITX rig with an RTX 2060, 9900K, 32 gig of RAM, and 10 gig networking. I'm pretty happy with this result, even though the network jack is just kind of sticking out the back of the computer. It is now 10 gig in an ITX rig, so that's pretty cool. I keep all my files on a storage server here, including my games and stuff. So being able to have really fast access speeds to my servers is very important for me. So this is a win in my book. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you liked this video. If you really liked it, there's a subscribe button down there so you don't miss any future videos. I'm gonna put links to all of the stuff that I used in this video down in the description below, including these little, you know, jumper keystones here. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.